And that's what uh, Hutner's Paris, uh, Mayer's Menswear, and the Myers Brothers Drugstore uh, look like today. A um, little bit of the 50s on the boulevard you can see. Um, I believe that's a uh, Dodge down in the lower left hand, the right hand corner. Um, you still see those cars plying the boulevard to this day. Jacked up a little, they have bigger rims. Um, 50s construction on the boulevard, two uh, little ranch style houses that are um, on the west end of the boulevard. There's a fair amount of this on the east end as well. And in the 60s, uh, one of the biggest events was the fire at the A&P. And I believe the uh, A&P is located at the corner of, is now a CBS. Um, same location, different building. I believe someplace along the line, it was either a Rogers or Maloli's. Um, A&P wilted and faded in Fort Wayne and their buildings were bought by uh, Maloli's, which was a big concern at the time, uh, and Rogers Markets, which um, faded out of existence about 10 years ago. Um, oh, I should go back, but uh, um, I note that in, there in the 50s, the Dutch Elm disease struck the boulevard. Remember, it was plain trees that died quickly because they weren't adapted to the winters here, and then it was Dutch elm trees that died because of the disease. So, ever looking forward uh, to replace the Dutch elm trees with planted ashes. The uh, Whitmer Hall is uh, in the 1000 block of Rudisville Boulevard in the West End. $3 million to build it um, in the 60s and named after uh, Safari Whitmer, uh, who was raised in Grable um, and was one of a um, series of uh, presidents of the university over there, um, many of them with last names like um, Gehrig. Uh, it was a German speaking institution for its first 10 years, and uh, most of the pastors came from. German communities around here, including Grable and Harlem. And it's, it's, it has a long, interesting history. And it is a Fort Wayne school. It is a Fort Wayne school. Um, in the 70s, there are more attacks on the boulevard than there is progress, I believe. Uh, fire station, the, whole, the nice old historic looking fire station is knocked down and it was built. Um, Trees were removed in the central business area. Turf was removed. There was more concrete put in. The setbacks uh, changed. Um, more variances to the point that that area became really what it is today, a central strip mall area. Uh, lost its character, lost the boulevard character. Uh, you see the demolition down there of the old station, which is pictured up above, and then the, uh, the new station down below, which is nice if you like Southwest American architecture. Uh, graduation, this is uh, the year that the Falcons, which was the name of the basketball team, had a basketball team then, won the National Christian Conference Athletic Association Division II National Championship. National, big time. Uh, the 80s, more troubles. Um, downward slope, harvester closes, I mean, what can you say about what happened to the east side when the harvester closed? All those jobs gone, all those little shops gone, all those little organ shops going in, uh, shops, I mean, uh, companies that uh, provide tool and die shops that provided them with um, pieces of equipment for the travel or the scout. Uh, those closed. The suppliers closed, and all the little restaurants closed, and all the little bars and dives closed, and everything that fed off of the harvester left. And on the east side of Fort Wayne, in neighborhoods that were nice and clean and tidy, you have a fire sale. Everybody is selling their properties because many of them have to move to a different community to keep their jobs, or many of them are choosing to 
you know, to ride the bus every day from Fort Wayne to Springfield to work. Um, buses every day, back and forth. Some people would stay there for a week and then come back on the weekend. But the neighborhood uh, essentially went to hell. The west end or the east end and Alexander Street and Pontiac and Fruhoff moves out of town and you have a, you have a lot of houses that are all, all of a sudden for sale and the price starts here and it goes down to here. They're all split up, they're turned into rentals and the area suffers and is still suffering, if I may say so. Um, in 1981, there was a uh, plan by the um, Moses administration, I think carrying over plans from the Armstrong administration, but I'm not sure about that, to cut through Foster Park um, and run Bluffton Road straight across the park onto Rue de Savola. And, um, and then to make Rudisil Boulevard, the South Bypass, if you remember at the time, where well, we had have, we have one circumurban in Fort Wayne at the time, which didn't quite circle the urban, but that was uh, Coliseum Boulevard. Yuta Road, Coliseum Boulevard, California Road, and that was US 30. And the idea was then to link Rudisil so that it would go around the east side of town, be a truck route. Sharon Lapp, um, who remembers that name? John remembers that name. You remember that name. You remember that name. Uh, she fought it. Uh, I talked to uh, a couple of the people that just moved off the block, and they said that she was, <laughs> she was um, never rested and indomitable in fighting that. And she brought in, well, I should go to the next slide. Uh, she brought in a um, and brought in the DNR to fight it. She argued, argued, argued. The Neighborhood Association hired a lawyer. She got the, the DNR to say, well, you can't run that across the parkland. Can't do that. So there was, the city was told that it couldn't get federal funding or state funding to extend Rudisil across, or uh, Rudisil across to the Bluffton Road. Uh, make it the fast route across the south side of Florida, which it would have been. Uh, she brought in um, a retired engineer from, street engineer, bridge engineer from um, Ohio. Um, and he went down to the bridge and he said, well, this bridge is going to last. It's got plenty of years ahead of it. It's not going to die. It's not going to crumble into the river. Um, like our friend Carl O'Neill had told the uh, people of Florida. It was deteriorating, the river, it was dangerous, it's falling apart, you gotta replace it. Um, so Carl was out there, I know you remember Carl John, I Very remember well. him. Um, you remember him then? Okay, great guy. Um, he was pretty good during the flood of 82. He, he held his own during the flood of 82. But on this matter, he, was, um, he told us that the bridge was bad, needed to be replaced, and it's the same bridge as there now. It was repaired. How many years later is 1981 to, come on, somebody do the math, 30 years? 30 years. So, um, the neighborhood fought and won. Um, in the 80s, at the end of the 80s, Tiffin comes in and buys Sears and repairs and uh, modernizes the building and it's now a government office center and a lot of, um, just pretty good condition. Right across from Wells Fargo, which has been repaired and modernized, uh, one of Donald and P. McDonald's buildings. And in the 90s, uh, Taylor comes in, buys the dying Bible College, um, campus stretching from Schultz Hall to Whitmer to the woods on, the, on Lexington. Um, they put a lot of money into the, the uh, campus over there. Um, in the 2000s, um, Taylor University happily in 2001 sold a Leitner Hall, uh, Foster's former home, to a private citizen um, who spent a lot of time working on fixing up that building, put a new roof on it, a new boiler, about $40,000 worth of work into it. Um, in 2005, 
uh, when I was in St. Petersburg, Russia, I got a call from somebody saying, your neighborhood's on fire. And Schultz Hall is a two-minute block from my house. So I came back, I did a tour of the building after the fire. Um, respirators and respirators and all, about 10 of them in the neighborhood. We walked through it. Um, a mess. But it's in structurally excellent condition. That building was built to last. Um, the next high point on the history of the boulevard is, um, I think John can tell this story better than I could, but when uh, Patricia O'Donnell was brought to Fort Wayne, a, um, um, a request for proposal was led. She's uh, another leading uh, landscape architect in the United States. She came uh, to Fort Wayne, did a study of Rudisil Boulevard, of uh, Foster Park, I believe, of uh, Macmillan Park, and um, I'm not sure, but a couple more. Um, they're here in the library. You can read the entire report and its recommendations on how to move forward with um, nurturing the boulevard back to its former beauty and strength and character. Um, Julie Donnell, who's, um, well, I'm Julie Donnell, Friends of the Park, um, introduced me to that booklet, suggested I read it from front to back. Uh, since then, we've been working with uh, uh, the commercial area, we've been working with the city, uh, we've been working with neighborhood associations to revive the boulevard. Uh, we, the neighborhood, planted small planning. It was, uh, we paid for 65 trees. The city planted another uh, 30 or 40, 35, 36, something like that. Uh, they will be through planting more trees on the boulevard as we can pay for them, and we're paying for them. Um, the landscape report also recommended, recommended how to improve the commercial area. So uh, as Rudisil Boulevard was brought back down to, or brought down to three lanes, um, we noticed that um, the commercial area was not being modified as proposed in the landscape report. So we um, reminded the city that we wanted that done in the most direct way. Uh, our city councilman was not the one in the back of the room, but the one that lives in the neighborhood and should be involved in this was reminded many, many, many times that we wanted the commercial area uh, to be beautified a la the, or the cultural landscape report. So we're banging away at that right now. Um, and we are probably, while well, we're going to, with the city's help, put together another proposal on how the commercial area can be beautified and so that the, um, the people that own those curb cuts and own those parking lots can see the benefit in having more trees, more plantings, more beautification. So if you put among the highlights of the, this decade up there, it would be um, the Friends of the Book and the work that you're doing in that area. That would be one of the highlights. One of the sad things is that the um, Taylor University has closed the campus, and it's been setting fallow for a year and a half now, almost two years. Um, and we have uh, the possibility of a buyer, which uh, has vague ideas on what they might do with a sprawling campus that has um, dormitories, a huge student union, um, a library, a cultural center, uh, who knows? I mean, there are there is plenty of space over there for them to do something. And a soccer field, so we're trying to figure out what uh, ambassador plans to do um, on that location, which is a determinant of how well the boulevard will fail or will fare. Future. That's it.